Coming in at number 10 today, we have Kate Middleton. When sibling rivalry is a common thing, Kate Middleton and Meghan Markle have drama that is a bit more than that. When news started to arise that there was a lot of tension between Kate and Meghan as the two were not getting along, this meant that Harry and William were also not getting along. With the whole family not seeing eye to eye, it became super hard on everyone, including the Queen. It said that the Queen was actually so fed up with the drama that she even ordered Kate and Meghan to sit down and sort it all out. With Kate feeling like Meghan Meghan was using her to climb the royal ladder. Kate would even use this time to state that she was very suspicious of Meghan and that she had no interest in becoming Meghan's friend. Soon the media would even start to state that Meghan made Kate cry on her wedding day. Although Kate would end up sending Meghan flowers to apologize, Kate still didn't want to have an opportunity to become close to the actress. It said that Kate was really hesitant about pursuing a friendship with Meghan when they first met as Kate is a very private person and she likes to keep things that way. Way. While Kate tends to keep a really tight circle, she doesn't let a lot of people in and she's always felt like there was something extremely off with Meghan. While the tension between the two has become more tense, the royal family, including Kate, have decided to cut Meghan and Harry out for continuing to spread lies about the royal family and attempt to tarnish their legacy. At number 9, Piers Morgan. The feud between Piers Morgan and Meghan Markle tends to get pretty nasty at times. While Piers has stated over and over since the beginning that Meghan was a liar and that we shouldn't dive too deep into her story, we probably should have listened to him. Piers' relationship with Meghan began back in 2015 when the actress apparently messaged Piers after he had followed some of her suit's castmates. While Meghan went on to claim that she was a big fan of him in the beginning, I think it's safe to say that she probably isn't a big fan now. When things rapidly started to disintegrate between the two after Meghan became a household name thanks to her romance with Prince Harry, it seems like their feud first started to boil over Meghan's first message to him. In 2016, after Piers and Meghan had been in constant communication with each other. When Meghan went to a private members club where she met Prince Harry, Piers would then never hear from Meghan again. So it's clear that her relationship with Piers was only for clickbait so she could get some views. However, when Harry came around, she realized that she could get everything she wanted or Piers could give it to her. And essentially, she left Piers behind. As soon as it was announced that Meghan was dating Harry, that's when his first dig towards Meghan came public. And since he's continued to mock her and call her out on her behavior. Now, we have seen dozens of people get ghosted by Meghan. When she sees that their relationship isn't getting her anywhere in the spotlight, as we've seen her do it to her friends, her ex-husband, and almost all of her family. Hey Peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming in at number 8, we have Wendy Williams. It's no lie that Wendy Williams loves talking about celebrity gossips while hosting the Wendy Williams show back in 2021. She didn't shy away from her true thoughts about Meghan Markle. When Meghan and Harry made the decision to leave the royal family. Now, after Wendy watched the groundbreaking interview Meghan and Harry had with Oprah, she would cast her own doubts about Meghan and claim that her friends actually tried to warn Meghan not to marry Prince Harry because the media probably wouldn't be too kind to her as they're not really kind to any of the royal family. With Wendy claiming that Meghan weaseled her way into the kingdom before leaving the United Kingdom for Los Angeles, with Wendy claiming that Meghan was lying about her story, Wendy would then claim that Meghan should have listened to her friends instead of pretending not to get it when her friends warned her about the British media's fixation on the royals. Wendy would also state that Meghan knew what she was getting herself into when she joined the royal family and that no one really has sympathy for her. Wendy would then try to claim that Meghan knew what she was doing because no one knew her when she was on Suits and Wendy only knew her prior to becoming a royal because she wanted to be a runway model for her company and came in for an interview. Coming at number 7, we have Corey V. Tiello. So it appears that Meghan Markle was still living with Canadian society chef Corey Vitiello when she went on her first date with Prince Harry. In a recently published biography, Tom Bauer would then claim that Meghan was still living with Corey when she set up a date with Prince Harry in London back in 2016. Tom would write that the romantic relationship between Corey and Meghan was hanging on by a thread before she left for Europe in the summer of 2016, yet both were still having troubles with discussing on how their relationship would end. But Corey still living in the couple's house while Meghan left for the United Kingdom, he had no idea that their relationship was completely doomed. The two first met when Meghan was eating at his restaurant with Suits cast, and Meghan even gushed over Corey in a review in The Take where she dubbed Corey as her favorite chef. When their relationship had finally run its course, instead of breaking things off Corey, she went to England to seek a new romance. While in England, Meghan would then be set up on a date with Harry by a friend. And then, when Harry came to visit Meghan in Toronto, 
Corey would realize that the relationship was officially over and Megan's cruel and sensitive soul would be revealed to the world. Coming in at number 6 we have Trevor Angleson. If anyone knows the true colors of Meghan Markle then it would be her ex-husband Trevor Angleson. Trevor who is a producer has kept a pretty tight lipped when it comes to talking about Meghan however when royal biographer Andrew Morton released a book on Meghan called Meghan a Hollywood princess the book would dive into the idea that Trevor actually had a lot to say about Meghan he was actually just waiting for someone to believe his side of the story. According to Andrew, Trevor actually dislikes Meghan. When Trevor and Meghan first got married, everything was fine. However, after she started to rise to fame, she would begin to treat Trevor like the dirt under her shoe. And if this isn't giving you any red flags, then maybe I should bring up the fact that the palace staff has also said that once Meghan moved in, she also treated them like the dirt under her shoe. Trevor felt elevated in their marriage at first. He didn't really think anything was going wrong. However, things finally ended and it would leave behind a never ending cold fury towards Megan. With Megan once claiming that she couldn't imagine her life without Trevor, she would then mail him back his wedding ring instead of breaking things off in person, and she would then come to the house to collect her blender. And it said that Megan initially just called things off because he refused to cast her in any of his shows. Number 5, Aaron Foster. Aaron Foster finds Meghan Markle a spoiled brat who has it all. Now Aaron is a comedian, performer, and writer who is known for her history of putting several celebrities on blast, including Megan. In the months of November 2017, Aaron would come for Megan when she posted a photo of Megan from her days on the game show Deal or No Deal. And she captioned the photo as Never Never forget. Later on, she would then post another picture of Megan where it would show Megan with a briefcase from the same show. Aaron would then proceed to caption the photo with an even more rude caption that read, This briefcase is filled with my plans to become famous. It's no secret that Aaron considers Megan to be nothing more than a fame hungry social climber. And with everything that's been going on lately, it proves that Megan is definitely someone who played her cards right to get everything she ever wanted. And now that she has it, Aaron isn't scared to call her out on it. While the whole world at first criticized Aaron for posting the picture, they should have been looking at the facts that Megan knew exactly what she was getting herself into. And number four, Christy Swan. Australian TV personality and author Christy Swan has hated Megan since the beginning. And following the news on the royal engagement between Prince Harry and Megan, the radio host wrote on Facebook, For some reason, I still haven't warmed to her. It's her manner. She looks like she's performing to me. It looks like she's portraying a concocted humility of acting. While Megan is indeed a brilliant actress, it's not hard to see why Chrissy believes that she is acting to show the world that she is head over heels for Harry. Since the beginning, Chrissy has always been keen on critiquing Meghan Markle. She even first opened up about her judgement on her personal Facebook page, which would state that Chrissy would never warm up to Meghan as she was under the impression that since the beginning, Meghan has always been acting. And since Meghan has continued to place the same narrative that the royals hated her, and we probably should take this as a hint that there might be some truth behind what Chrissy has been saying. However, instead, Chrissy's Facebook page has turned into an open field of judgement as hundreds of fans have expressed their agreement or disagreement with Chrissy. So do you think Chrissy is right and Megan is just acting? And let us know in the comments below. And number 3, Samantha Grant. Megan Markle's estranged sister, Samantha Grant would expose her relationship with her sister in a tell all book. Samantha would highlight that Megan isn't as innocent as she seems, even though they grew up in different lives sharing the same father, Samantha doesn't have any sort of relationship with Meghan whatsoever. When the rumors began to swirl about Prince Harry's engagement to Meghan, Samantha stated that she felt like Meghan was taking advantage of her current situation to become a household name. Samantha would even state that Meghan has a history of lying and manipulating certain settings in her sights for no reason. While Samantha isn't exactly a celebrity, she's still worth mentioning because who knows you better than your own siblings. Also, she's had some pretty good opinions on Meghan that we should have listened to before we all took Megan's side in the beginning. Samantha has labeled her sister as a social climber and has claimed that when she needed her sister at the most, she was never there for her. Later, Samantha would even publicly blash Megan again when she claimed that she wasn't even invited to her wedding. Given that the two sisters did end up growing up in different households and the fact that they did live different lives for most of their lives, while the world bashed Samantha for just looking for attention when she came out with her story, however, given that we've seen Megan do a complete 180 in years to come, after Samantha 
Samantha's comments, it's safe to say that she wasn't just using Meghan's name for clickbait. Number two, Katie Hopkins. It's no secret that Katie Hopkins hates Meghan Markle as she's been scrutinizing every one of Meghan's moves since the beginning. When the scandal of Meghan and Harry first started to make headlines, Katie would hop on the trend and she would share a shocking media rant with the world. The Daily Mail writer and media personality made it really clear that she has no respect for someone like Meghan Markle. With Katie finding her move to leave the royal family distasteful, she would even bash Meghan for being addicted to Instagram. Katie has also been very vocal when it comes to labeling Meghan as an American Kate Middleton in a budget Princess Diana with an Oscar winning innocent face. Katie was also furious when Prince Harry pleaded to the media to respect his girlfriend's privacy as Katie would say in her social media rant that if you don't want Miss Sparkle trolled on social media, advise her to stay away from posting pictures of bananas spooning on her Instagram account. Katie's rant would also include her wishing that Meghan and Harry would end up losing their royal titles. She feels like Meghan's relationship is coming off as a desperate to be a celebrity move. And coming in at number one today, we have Daniel Radcliffe. Now Daniel Radcliffe doesn't just have a distaste for Meghan Markle, but he honestly just hates the whole royal family altogether. Daniel has never been afraid to confess that he doesn't agree with the whole country's appreciation for the royal family, even though he is a patriot by heart, he doesn't understand why there is still a need for monarchy. He also didn't shy away from stating that he is extremely proud to be English, however he believes that the monarchy still symbolizes a lot of things wrong with this country and he doesn't understand why countries still follow the monarchy. While Daniel has said that he does sympathize with Meghan because of the harsh treatment she's gotten from the press, he also doesn't think the royal family is doing anything wrong. He simply just doesn't like them because they represent a symbol of class division, which is something Thing he doesn't particularly like because he is an upper middle class kid. While Daniel has chosen to shade the royal family in the most respectful manner, he definitely chooses to distance himself from the royal family for a reason and we should probably take that as a hint going forward. Starting off our list at number 10 today, we have Justin Bieber still loves Selena. So imagine being married to a guy that still loves his ex. How would you feel? Well, if you were Hailey Bieber, you'd probably be thinking after her latest mean girl move that her relationship is completely over with Justin Bieber. Let's face it, Canadians are nice and we don't stand mean girls. Since Justin got married to Haley, he hasn't felt whole and it came to the point after Selena was hospitalized that he thought he made a huge mistake when it came to his marriage with Haley. An inside source would then reveal that Justin still loves Selena as she was his first great love and while he was young and traveling around the world as a superstar, he learned a great deal from Selena. Even during his honeymoon with Haley, all he could do was think about Selena and this is why Haley and Justin are in therapy to help their marriage because they both know they made a mistake, but Haley just doesn't want to lose Justin to Selena. Number nine, the eyebrows. When Selena recently posted a video on her TikTok page, she would say, I accidentally laminated my eyebrows too much to the point Kylie Jenner would then find herself in the middle of Haley's and Selena's feud after she posted a photo on her Instagram story writing, this was an accident on top of her own laminated brows. And not going to lie, the timing was just pretty questionable considering that Selena Selena shared a video on her TikTok just a few hours before. And adding more fuel to the fire, Kylie then went on to share a screenshot of a FaceTime call with Haley where they both showed their eyebrows for the camera. But Kylie quickly went on to deny the fact that she helped mock Selena with Haley after she noticed her followers were declining on her social media platforms by saying, this is reaching no shades towards Selena ever. I didn't see her eyebrow post. You guys are making something out of nothing. This is silly. Clearly Selena just didn't want to step on the biggest family in Hollywood's heels, so she obviously went on to agree with Kylie and went on to say, agreed Kylie Jenner, it's all unnecessary. I'm a fan of Kylie. But it's clear Kylie and Haley were both making fun of Selena, which is sad to see. And there's a reason why they're losing millions of followers today. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You know, subscribe to the channel Jumping back into the list at the number eight spot, we have Selena's body. So back in January, Haley posted a TikTok video which her friends Kendall Jenner and Justine Skye were in, and you could see them all mouthing the words, "I'm not saying she deserved it, but God's timing is always right." Haley was then quick to delete the video after fans commented saying her post was clearly directed at Selena. After Selena was hit with body shaming comments on a bikini photo she posted, so. 
it makes us wonder if Haley, did you hate Selena's bikini picture because Justin liked it? And while Haley said she never comments on things like body shaming, she then tried to clarify why the post that she deleted was deleted and said the post was just a random TikTok sound that the group did for fun and that it wasn't directed at anyone. However, it's kind of hard to believe because the way Kendall went on to sip her drink made it clear that it was directed at someone because let's face the fact, the Kardashians aren't good actors and neither is Haley. At the end of the day, Selena seemed unbothered by the mean post as she went on to say, okay, I don't let these things get me down. Be nice to everyone. Number seven. Taylor Swift. After the whole eyebrow ordeal, the whole world started to wonder what happened that made Haley randomly turn into a mean girl. But the truth is, the star has always been a mean girl. And we all just didn't realize it until now. After Selena came across a resurfaced video of Haley seemingly targeting her best friend, Taylor Swift, in the clip, Haley could be seen co hosting Drop the Mic with Method Man. After the rapper says, in a one on one battle full of the meanest lyrics, about a celebrity since Taylor Swift's last album, the model could be seen sticking her fingers in her mouth and making a gagging notion. In the comment section, Selena then quickly came to Taylor's defense, commenting, So sorry, my best friend is and continues to be one of the best. That one definitely had to make Haley a little salty, as it's clear she only hates Selena's inner circle because she wants to be the next Selena Gomez, but who doesn't? Number six, talent. While Haley may be a model, it seems like she was only able to make a name for herself because she comes from a talented family. But when it comes to talent herself, she's been having a little bit of a hard time when it comes to booking runways and she blames it on a casting director who shook her confidence on the runway. While the model doesn't feel like putting herself into a position to feel small on the runway, it's not her first time that she would talk about feeling low as in 2019. She opened up in an Instagram post when she said, I'm insecure, I'm fragile, I'm hurting, I have fears, I have doubts, I have anxiety. Anxiety, I get sad. It seems like the reason Haley hates Selena so much is even when Selena is down, she still managed to continue on with her career and come out on top. While Haley may be more focused on her own skincare line, it's just clear she doesn't have the power to stay on top without her husband's name. And that's why she's sinking to the low level of taking other women down because she finds them a threat. Number five, nice girl. Since the beginning, Selena has always remained true to herself, as she's always come across to be this kind hearted individual who cares about the well-being of those around her. And she's used her platform to speak out about issues that truly matter. Her actions over the tears tell us more about her personality than a simple test ever could. Even if you look at photos of the star since she was small, she's always seen holding her head high with an inviting smile. But Haley, on the other hand, doesn't have a clean cut image like Selena. While Selena's fans claim that she's actually sweet and inviting, Haley won't even give her fans the time of day. Selena is also praised for her manners when she's out in public. Haley, on the other hand, has been called out for the way she treats others, especially servers. It's clear that even fans have been comparing the two girls' manners. And while Selena comes across as a nice girl, it's clear Haley has always been this mean girl. Also, have you ever noticed? Usually, Justin protects his wife in these sort of situations, but this time he's been pretty quiet, and it's clear he's letting Haley dig herself out of her own hole this time around. Number four, too mature for games. Just after Selena left the comment on Haley's resurfaced video of her making fun of Taylor Swift, Selena announced her plans to take a break from social media by saying, I'm gonna be taking a second from social media because it's this is a little silly and I'm 30, I'm too old for this. She then went on to delete her TikTok account. While Selena is known to take breaks from social media every now and then, as of early February, she revealed in an interview with Vanity Fair that she was really fond of TikTok and it was the only app she currently had on her phone because she found it to be less hostile. She would also say there are wonderful things about social media, like connecting with her fans and seeing how excited they are and seeing their stories. But today, Selena has her assistant upload photos for her. While Selena is too old to play games with Mean Girls of Hollywood, it seems like Hailey Bieber isn't over this phase just yet, and she's doing everything she can to get a rise out of Selena. And while Selena has definitely chosen to take the higher route and not succumb to what everyone's trying to draw out of her, it probably is why she's become Haley's number one target. Number three, dream life. Following the reignition of their ongoing feud, Selena's fans have been quick to dive into signs that they can use against Haley. Fans are now starting to believe that Haley has been copying Selena for years. And now several TikTok videos.
videos have been made where fans have pointed out things they believe aren't just coincidences and it's clear that Hailey was so obsessed with Justin Bieber at a young age, she wanted to become the next Selena Gomez. As an example, in one of the clips, Selena said in an interview she wished more people knew her heart. Then when Hailey showed up to do an interview with Jimmy Fallon, she said the exact same thing. The same thing appeared to be true when Selena said she was a huge Britney Spears fan and Hailey went on to echo a similar sentiment. Another TikTok video has also pointed out the similarities between Selena Gomez and Hailey's cooking show when Gomez launched Selena and Chef on HBO Max in 2020. Two years later, Hailey launched What's in My Kitchen on YouTube. The viral clip points out the likeness between the two cooking shows, which also captured Hailey saying, Okay, okie dokie, which is a phrase Selena's known for saying on her own show. Also, it seems like Hailey has also copied Selena's beauty line to a T, so copycat much? Number two, Justin's mom still loves Selena. Just when you thought all this Hailey Bieber and Selena Gomez drama couldn't get any worse, the drama has definitely reached its peak. As it now appears like Justin's mom has entered the chat. On top of Patty tweeting, hate is ugly, don't be ugly, Twitter fans have also claimed, she liked and unliked a comment about Selena taking a break from her social media accounts. It's clear that Justin's mom is on Selena's side in this situation as Selena has chosen to take the high road during the height of all this drama as she's remained unbothered by all of Hilly and her friends' hate. On top of the hate, Selena has also taken the time to tell her fans that she does love them for choosing to call out those who are being mean girls and who are on a mission to bring the singer down. And coming in at number one today, we have the home wrecker. During an appearance on the podcast Call Her Daddy, Haley would clarify the notion that she stole Justin from Selena as she explained that she never interfered with their relationship. The whole claim just seemed a little sus though because it came out of nowhere and it just came out days before Selena's documentary was released. In the interview, Haley would say, when he and I ever started like hooking up or like anything of that sort, he was not ever in a relationship ever at any point. She then told podcast host Alex Cooper, it's not my character to mess with someone's relationship. I would just never do that. I'm not interested in doing that and I never was. But just because she didn't take him away from a relationship doesn't mean that she didn't take advantage of Justin's situation. For Justin was with Haley just six months prior, he was still with Selena. And during this period, Justin was in a pretty vulnerable place. Haley made him believe that being married would fix all his problems and when it didn't, he started to realize maybe he married the wrong person. In at number 10, Katherine Kelly Lang. An old clip from a TV show has just resurfaced and it shows some celebrities talking about Ellen's mean streak years before it happened. Soap actress Katherine Kelly Lang and entertainment reporter Richard Reed had the conversation on a 2019 episode of I'm a Celebrity. When someone asked who the biggest mole in Hollywood was, Reed whispered, quote, Ellen, not nice. Lang agreed, saying, quote, she's great to watch on her show and everything, but I think her personality is completely different when you get her behind the scenes. Reed then replied, quote, I've heard it's hard to work on her show. And after exposing Ellen like that, I'm sure the two stars did everything possible to avoid her. It's crazy how much they knew though, way back in 2019. In at number nine, Nikki Tutorials. Nikki the Jagger, aka Nikki Tutorials, was the first and probably most famous influencer to sound the alarm about Ellen. And obviously after exposing Ellen like that, Nikki hoped she would never run into her again. Nikki appeared on the show after her coming out video went viral online. However, later on a Dutch talk show, she exposed the experience was not what she expected. When asked about the Ellen show, she said, quote, let me say there's a big difference between this show and Ellen DeGeneres. And I'm saying that in favor of this show. Adding, quote, it's nice that you say hi before the show. She didn't. Nikki later told the Dutch magazine NC, quote, call me naive, but I kind of expected to be welcomed with confetti cannons. Welcome to the Ellen DeGeneres show. But instead, it was greeted by an angry intern who was a bit overworked. Nikki knew that she would be blacklisted from Ellen's show and possibly many others for telling the truth, but we are all glad that she did. In at number eight, Dakota Johnson. Dakota Johnson is probably a little bit scared of Ellen right now because her name is synonymous with the takedown of Ellen. After Ellen announced that she was leaving her show, memes of their interaction started to go viral online. And it's clear that Ellen probably hates Dakota right now. The spat between them started because of Dakota's birthday party. Basically, Ellen called Dakota out on the show for not inviting her to the party. But Dakota clapped back that she actually did invite Ellen. This put Ellen totally on the spot where she had to come up with a lie very quickly 
Dakota later awkwardly called Tina Notaro her favorite comedian as well, which was kind of a Ellen. Dakota also flat out said in the interview, quote, I didn't even know you liked me to Ellen. I'm sure Dakota never expected her comments to go viral the way they did, and Dakota is hoping that she doesn't see Ellen anytime soon. Or at least I know if I was Dakota, I would literally do everything possible to avoid Ellen for the rest of my life. In at number seven, Brad Garrett. Back when Ellen was first exposed, one of the only celebrities to call her out was the Everybody Loves Raymond actor, Brad Garrett. He exposed her in a slew of tweets because he was clearly fed up with her behavior. He wrote on Twitter that her behavior was not a shock to him or anyone else in the industry for that matter. He replied to a tweet about the Ellen scandal and added, quote, sorry, but it comes from the top, the Ellen show, no more than one who were treated horribly by her, common knowledge. His tweet is now deleted. Garrett had appeared on the show multiple times before he made his statements, but clearly he didn't have a great experience and knew those comments would ruin his relationship with Ellen forever, but clearly he didn't seem to care. In at number six, Caitlyn Jenner. If you watched the last interview Ellen did with Caitlyn shortly after her transition, then you definitely know why Ellen will not be having her back on the show. Caitlyn even claimed that Ellen told her she was blacklisted. In her memoir, The Secrets of My Life, Caitlyn called out Ellen specifically for quote, alienating her from the LGBTQ community by not allowing Caitlyn to come on her show. However, many could argue that Caitlyn alienated herself because of the controversial comments that she made in that interview. In the 2015 interview, Ellen asked about Caitlyn's stance on gay marriage. She replied, quote, I have to admit that I remember 15 years ago, 20 years ago, whenever it was that whole gay marriage issue came up, I was not for it. Adding, quote, if that word marriage is important to you, I can go with it. And from Caitlyn's tone, it didn't seem genuine to Ellen, and Ellen called Caitlyn out on her hypocrisy, as Caitlyn wanted to be respected for being trans, but Caitlyn was still being apprehensive towards gay marriage. After this spat, it was clear the relationship was incredibly tense. Halfway at number five, Kathy Griffin. Kathy Griffin has actually gotten into multiple feuds with Ellen, so I would assume both of them avoid each other at all costs. Kathy exposed Ellen in her book, Celebrity Run-Ins, My A to Z Index. In that book, Griffin called out Ellen without saying her name, saying, quote, I'm almost positive a certain beloved daytime talk show host once had me kicked out of a backstage dressing room at the Emmy Awards. Griffin basically confirmed it was Ellen when she added that this person, quote, has short blonde hair and a mean streak all of Hollywood knows about. But this wasn't all. After Joan Rivers passed away, Griffin feuded with Ellen once again because of her decision to not do a memoriam segment on The Comedian. Griffin said, quote, there's so few female comics over 50. I wish we were better at supporting each other. In at number four, Callum Scott. Callum Scott exposed Ellen following her scandal for an awkward moment that he had before going on her show. He told the Daily Star online that right before he was about to go on stage, he was walking with a stage member. Scott was telling the Ellen crew member, quote, I told him I can't believe I'm getting to do this. And he was like, yeah, it's so amazing. But remember not to look Ellen in the eye. Everything else is fine, but just don't look her in the eye. Scott was obviously taken aback by this and wasn't sure how to respond. But moments later, Ellen's staff said that they were actually just joking and it was some sort of prank. And that's just a very strange prank considering many people claimed this was a real rule that Ellen had for her staff. And even if it was just a harmless prank, that's a really stupid prank to make to someone who was incredibly nervous to be going on stage and performing. In at number three, Celine Dion. Celine Dion had a very awkward encounter with Ellen while she was on her show, and it left many of Celine's fans with a bad impression of Ellen, probably including Celine herself. While Celine was being interviewed, Ellen showed a picture of Celine's son that had very long hair at the time. Ellen said, quote, look at him. He is beautiful, but look at his hair. When are you gonna cut that hair? Celine instantly clapped back saying, you got a problem with that? <laughs> Adding quote, some people shave the head of their children and people say, oh, isn't that terrible? I don't even cut my son's hair and they say, oh my God, when is she gonna cut her son's hair? You know, whatever I do, I won't please everyone. And you could cut the tension in that conversation with a knife. Celine has been back on the show since that incident, but I'm sure Ellen treads very lightly in her conversations now. In at number two, Drew Barrymore. This one is probably gonna be hard for a lot of you to believe, but apparently Ellen and Drew Barrymore do not like each other. And when they worked on the same show together, they butted heads a lot. The show was NBC's first date that launched in April 2017. It was executive produced by Ellen DeGeneres and narrated by Drew Barrymore. 
so clearly a star-studded group. But according to In Touch Weekly, their relationship was not good. A source told the Meg, quote, Ellen and Drew were a case of oil and water. Adding, quote, Ellen expected to be the one calling the shots, but Drew thought she should have creative control because she's the movie star people were tuning in to see. The show only aired for one season, so thankfully they didn't have to work together long, but now that Drew is in the daytime talk show business, I'm sure Ellen is even less fond of her. And finally, at number one, Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan feuds with a lot of people, and unsurprisingly, Ellen was one of those people. Their feud is actually because of Katy Perry. Basically, for Katy Perry's birthday in 2017, Ellen wished her a happy birthday on Twitter, writing, quote, happy birthday, Katy Perry. It's time to bring up the big balloons. Ellen included a photo of her staring at Perry's breasts jokingly, but many people did not think it was funny and labeled it as a form of sexual harassment. Some even compared Ellen to Harvey Weinstein. A lot of men in the industry also spoke out against it, saying the situation would have been a lot different if a man tweeted out the same thing. One of the most vocal critics was Piers Morgan, criticizing her for the sexist double standard. He also feuded with her in 2016 after she showed a shirtless picture of Chris Hemsworth during an acceptance speech. With Morgan writing, quote, I was disgusted. In fact, I've never been so offended by anything in my entire life. Coming in number 10, we have Prince William. A friend of Prince William recently told the Daily Beast that the prince feels utterly betrayed by Prince Harry's new book, Spare, and that he hated Prince Harry and Meghan due to the highly personal nature of the attacks they have unleashed on him and his wife, Kate Middleton. After days of sensational leaks and headlines from the book, the friend also said they believe it is now completely impossible that their relationship will ever be healed, and said that although they believed Harry and Meghan will still be invited to the coronation of King Charles and Queen Camilla, they suspected that William would insist they should be relegated to the cheap seats. The friend would also say that even if Harry and Meghan decided not to even show their faces, no one would mourn their absence. The friend would also go on to say, it's impossible to exaggerate the extent of William's contempt for Harry and Meghan now. He absolutely hates them and can't believe that Harry would do this to him and Kate. He feels utterly betrayed and deeply saddened by everything that has happened. There will be no way back after this. The thing that is so sad is that it was a tight family and Harry has blown it all up for what? He has literally turned his entire family against him. It seems like Harry and William have been at odds for a while because in the book Spare, Harry talks about how William attacked him and caused Harry to fall on the ground and break a dog bowl. But both Kensington Palace and Buckingham Palace not responding to the allegations, it's really clear that they would rather just let this situation fizzle out on its own. Number nine, King Charles. According to various sources, the one who has taken Meghan and Harry's documentary and Harry's book, Spare, more seriously is King Charles III, who made the determination to confront the issue head on. While sources close to the king have said that he does not plan to go to the British Parliament to ask Prince Harry and Meghan to lose their titles of Duke and Duchess of Sussex, he will also not appear to the media to criticize the couple, as he plans to do something more decisive, and that is to cut all ties off officially with the couple. King Charles has basically applied the law of ice to his son and his son's wife and he will no longer be inviting them to family gatherings, whether it be public or private. It's also been reported that the monarch will not be asking them to accompany him on his traditional vacations in Scotland as Queen Elizabeth II did. And on top of that, they will also not be invited to this year's coronation ceremony of King Charles, which takes place on May 6, 2023. This decision will also affect Harry and Meghan's children as they will no longer be welcomed to participate in royal and religious celebrations. While it's known that Charles hates confrontation, during his first speech in a television interview after the passing of his mother, he would say, Harry and Meghan, we send you our love, but you know, love has been spurned. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Number eight, Howard Stern. Howard Stern isn't a big fan of Prince Harry, and he has a lot to say with Netflix docuseries, Harry and Meghan. With Howard stating that the couple in the series came off as such whiny bees. The radio show host on Sirius XM show would say, I gotta tell you, man, I just don't get it. And honestly, I'm with Howard on this one because I don't get it either. Despite his criticism, Howard would state that he sympathizes with Harry over the loss of his mother, Princess Diana, as the palace treated her really poorly and Harry lost her at such a young age after watching her battle with this hate. But he would also state, but Jesus Christ, when those two, Harry and Meghan, start whining about wow, wow, Wah, wah, wah. They don't like me. And Megan wants to be loved in this country. It's just weird to see two people who 
keep screaming. We wanted our privacy. We wanted the press to leave us alone. And then what is their special that they put on Netflix? Showing you them and their kids and their life? How we would then know that the docu-series was like the Kardashians, except it was pretty boring to watch. How would then also take time to throw a jab at Harry's relationship by saying, I think he's eventually not gonna dig her. I'm telling you. Number seven, Bethany Frankel. Bethany Frankel's legit rant included the suggestion that Harry and Meghan should make a documentary about women's issues and racism instead of retelling their story about the royal family. And she also didn't hold back when it came to sharing her thoughts on Prince Harry's new memoir. As she thinks the Duke of Sussex has taken it a step too far. Bethany said, it's too late to change the name of Harry's book to Dirty Harry Laundry. I mean, if I had a nickel for every person who had a throwdown with a family member, brother, it's crazy. How much more? In a video, the former Real House of New York City star went on to suggest that a better name for the book would be her own Bravo catchphrase, mentioning it all, while predicting how intimate Harry and Meghan were going to get about their lives in the future. Bethany would also go on to ask what the couple's overall goal was to achieve as they have money. They're getting the attention they didn't want, but at the same time, they're getting the attention they did want. She would also note that if they wanted to tackle women's issues and racism, they should have made a docu-series about that. But it seems like the biggest topic Harry and Meghan can't stop talking about is their family. It seems like her biggest problem is that Harry keeps trying to get sympathy for Meghan, but the way he and Meghan are going about it is just achieving opposite results. Number six, Kate Middleton. Kate Middleton has been completely silent about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's Netflix documentary, but apparently she's pretty hurt and feels betrayed. An inside source has confirmed that Kate's husband, William, isn't planning to give his side of the story or openly retaliate. And this whole thing is remaining dignified and getting on with the job. But Kate feels hurt and betrayed that Harry would do this to her, especially as the pair used to be so close. In Harry's book Spare, he would write that both Kate and Prince William were allegedly religious suit watchers and that they were both in disbelief when he started dating Meghan. However, it seems like when Meghan became his fiance and joined their Fab Four, things would take a sour turn. With Harry implying that William felt pressure to marry Kate because she fit into this mold by saying, for so many people in the family, especially obviously men, there can be temptation or an urge to marry someone who would fit into the mold, as opposed to somebody who you're perhaps destined to be with. The difference between making decisions with your head or your heart. My mom certainly made most of her decisions, if not all of them, with her heart, and I am my mother's son. And to hear this must have really hurt Kate, so I don't blame her and the rest of the royal family for icing Prince Harry and Meghan out completely. Number five, Sharon Osbourne. Sharon Osbourne has recently taken aim at Prince Harry for doing a terrible thing by cutting his three-year-old son and one-year-old daughter off from the rest of their family. On an episode of Talk TV, the outspoken media personality and her panel discussed the trailers of Harry's bombshell TV interviews, which aired in the US and the UK on Sunday. During the debate, Sharon would say it was such an ugly situation for the children whose ties with the extended family have been cut because of Meghan and Harry Harry's rift with the royal family. Sharon will go on to know it's finally enough as families argue all the time. And there is nothing like a good old family bust up and then you get back together again, it's normal. But what's not normal is Harry's children as they will now be forced to grow up with no family, not on his wife's side or his side and that's a terrible thing for children. Sharon would then claim that the time is now turning against Harry and Meghan in the United States and it seems like only the younger generation is continuing to support them by saying, I think older generations have definitely had it up to here with their whining. Number four, Jeremy Clarkson. Former Top Gear host Jeremy Clarkson has never been more sensitive of souls. The TV personality has built a career of offending pretty much every minority group. So it wasn't really surprising that he didn't think much of Prince Harry, barring his soul in his docu-series in 2021. Jeremy would say, this man is an army officer. So he should know better than to make a program in which he waxes lyrical about the awfulness of his upbringing. Jeremy would then add, the me you can't see is wit and it should really be called the me you don't wanna see as that's nearer to the mark. He then put forward the theory that spoiled brats will end up overshadowing those individuals who seriously need help with their mental health. Jeremy would then claim that Harry's stiff upper lip approach has to work wonders. It's clear that Jeremy thinks Harry should know 
know better than to complain about his upbringing. And Harry also calling out Jeremy for inciting violence towards women in cruel columns in The Sun, dreaming of Megan shame parade. It's clear that the two have a mutual hate towards each other, and it's clear that Jeremy also didn't like the docu series as he took to his column in The Sun and wished Megan was treated like dirt. And while he did take to Twitter to apologize for his clumsy reference, you wouldn't apologize to Harry and Megan, we'll probably never see that. Number three, we have Candace Owens, conservative commentator. Candace Owens has never been one to mince her words, so it wasn't really unexpected that she would deliver one of the most scathing responses to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's talk with Oprah Winfrey. After watching the interview, Candace would put forward this theory that Harry was in an emotionally abusive the relationship. Candace would then go on to imply that the couple, implying that everything was happening to them because of the color of Meghan's skin, was becoming a sickening level of scapegoating. What Harry's doing to his family is unforgivable. Candace would throw a major dig at Harry following the premiere of his Apple TV docu-series, The Me You Can't See, by referring the mental health docu-series. Candace would say in a tweet, It's been three days since Prince Harry offered an exclusive interview regarding of how much he and Meghan hate his family. Can someone check on them, please? Number two, Piers Morgan. One can argue that Piers Morgan has a personal vendetta against Meghan Markle, which appears to stem solely from the time she apparently ghosted him after a date. However, it's clear that he doesn't really like Harry whatsoever as well, as Prince Harry is regularly ends up in the crosshairs of the disgraced ex-newspaper editor. In the space of just one month in 2021, Morgan went on a rant and claimed that the royal only criticized the first amendment because he doesn't want to be held accountable by the press and Piers would also tweet that Harry is a hypocrite who makes money off his public family drama. Piers would then offer his support to Noelle Gallagher in his anti-Harry trade. Of course, Morgan has also had plenty of time to weigh in on the Sussexes in general since he walked away from his hosting gig on TV show Good Morning Britain Live after a fellow presenter challenged his constant harassment of Markle. However, after walking away, it's only given him more freedom to support his dislike towards both Harry and Meghan. And some of the things he said proves that he doesn't just have a personal vendetta towards Meghan, he hates both of the royals. And number one today we have Noelle Gallagher. During the peak of Britpop era, Noelle Gallagher was deemed by many, including Prime Minister Tony Blair, to be the voice of his generation. Indeed, even if you weren't a fan of the Oasis Beatle aping indie rock, you could always appreciate a snappy one-liner from their guitarist, Noelle Gallagher. But a quarter century on, on, and Noel is in danger of sounding like the kind of person he used to rally against. In a 2021 interview with The Sun, Noel would describe Prince Harry as an effing woke snowflake in response to his criticism of the royal family, and referencing his own sibling rivalry with Liam Gallagher. Noel would admit that he sympathizes with Prince William as he has a younger brother who is running his mouth off with things that are just really unnecessary to say. And that's why Noel finds himself being a lot like William. Noel has never been afraid to take a good job at Meghan as well, as he would also say that everything is happening right now is happening because they got an American involved in their family matters. He would then ask viewers, how much of a C is Prince Harry. Coming at number 10 today, we have Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga's trouble with Madonna is so long and shady that she could probably ultimately take every point on this list today. After Gaga was deemed the second coming of Madonna, the dueling divas made fun of their alleged feud on Saturday Night Live. However, Madonna later dissed Lady Gaga in real life when Gaga's music is reductive in comparison to her own performing deliberate mashups of Born This Way and Express Yourself to seemingly highlight the similarities. Gaga would then tell a radio show in 2016 that she and Madonna were very different and that she wouldn't make that comparison at all and she didn't mean to disrespect Madonna. Gaga would also go on to say, but I play a lot of instruments, I write my own music, I spend hours and hours a day in the studio. I'm a producer, I'm a writer, what I do is different. I'm not just rehearsing over and over again to put on a show. There is spontaneity to my work. I allow myself to fall, I allow myself to break, I'm not afraid of my flaws. I just will not be compared to anyone anymore. I am who the F I am, and this is me. Number nine, Cher. In a 1991 interview, Cher discussed Madonna and her dislike towards the star, and it was pretty juicy as she made herself very loud and clear about her lackluster opinion of Madonna. When the interviewer asked the singer if she goes jogging like the material girl, Cher would respond by saying, Do you mean my very best friend Madonna? The interviewer then said that the question was made to drag Madonna 
Donna into the conversation. And Cher responded by saying, How about dragging her in by her hair? The Believe singer then continued to say, In my day, I was pretty good at doing the same thing that she's doing. But she does it so much better. She's unbelievably creative because she's not talented. She's not beautiful, but she's kind of, she's rude. But I really don't have anything against her. I do respect that she goes further than anyone else should go. Hey, my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Number eight, David Letterman. David Letterman has disliked Madonna ever since she sat down for an interview with him in 1994 for The Late Show with David Letterman. Madonna was obnoxious and crass during the interview that she would probably make the modern day Miley Cyrus blush. And her actions pretty much left David speechless. During the interview, Madonna went on to drop a handful of F-bombs that just seemed endless. She even proceeded to give David Letterman a pair of her underwear and then proceeded to try to get him to sniff them. Not to mention when her segment ended, she just refused to leave the stage. While David proceeded to tell Madonna people didn't want to hear her swearing in their homes, when he tried to end the interview, Madonna would say, can't this go on? And Letterman would fire back saying, feels like it already has. Madonna would then later claim that her disastrous appearance was her way of protesting against television censorship, but I don't think any of us really believe that. Number seven, we have Mariah Carey. Madonna definitely did some critical damage when she slammed Mariah in a 1996 interview telling Spin that Mariah's music wasn't art and that if she had to sing Mariah's catalog, she would take her own life. Little did Madonna know that she would open herself a huge can of shade that would span on for decades because no one ever serve shade better than Mariah Carey. When MTV News asked Mariah about Madonna's comment in early 1996, she would shrug and say, I haven't paid attention to Madonna since I was like in seventh or eighth grade when she used to be popular, so I didn't hear that. Later in an interview in 1998, Mariah would double down on her comments about Madonna after she was asked what she thought about Madonna and Mariah. And she said, I haven't heard the new album. Growing up, I liked her first album a lot. That was really popular, good for her. And then seven times throughout the interview, Mariah would allegedly mock Madonna, not by her name, but using a faux British accent. Number six, Elton John. Sir Elton John and Madonna's feud lasted more than a decade. Back in 2002, their feud began when Elton called her song, Die Another Day, the worst Bond tune ever. Then in 2003, he would slam Madonna's nomination for best live act at the Q Awards, saying on stage, since when has lip syncing been live? Anyone who lip syncs in public on stage Stage when you pay 75 pounds to see them should be shot. This is when Madonna reportedly started to return Elton's Christmas cards and she even rejected his invitation to perform at his bachelor party. In January 2012, John and his husband David Furnish would both end up slamming Madonna publicly when her song Masterpiece from WE beat out John's contributions to Nomeo and Juliet at the Golden Globes. That July, he said on Australian TV, Who is she? Such a nightmare. Sorry, her career is over. Her tour has been a disaster and it couldn't happen to be a bigger B. And she looks like an effing fairground stripper. In 2016, Elton would even reveal on the Graham Norton show that he and Madonna did eventually bury their hatchet by saying, I was in a restaurant in south of France a couple years ago when she walked in and I sent her a note saying, you'll probably never speak to me again, but I'm really sorry and ashamed of myself and can I buy you dinner? She was very gracious and accepted and we talked we are fine, it's just me and my big mouth. Number five, Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson's beef with Madonna all started after Madonna attempted to date Michael Jackson in the early 90s. Jermaine Jackson wrote in his book, You are not alone, Michael, through a brother's eyes. And he thought Madonna sincerely adored Michael, but it wasn't a mutual feeling. And she committed two cardinal sins. The first was she was hell bent on loosening him up and getting him to see life through her eyes. The second mistake was when Michael went, to, went out for dinner with her one night, Madonna tried to criticize Janet and Michael was furious and the two never went on a date again. In 1994, Janet would tell Vibe, I never said hate. Hate is a strong word, but if I did hate Madonna, I'd have a valid reason. After that interview was published, Madonna told VJ Kurt Lauder that Janet dissed her and she didn't know why and when she read it herself, she was like, okay, this sounds ominous. What did I do? I've never met the woman. I don't know anyone she knows. I'm mystified. Later when Janet was asked about 
about going head to head with Madonna, Janet would reply by saying, I think, how do I put this? I think what I do has class to it. I'll say that. In 2012, it would then seem to be Madonna who was igniting the fire during the Super Bowl halftime show press tour. She would snidely address Jackson's nipple gate by saying, You don't have to show nipples to be interesting. It doesn't necessarily mean you're cutting edge if you do, right? Number four, Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow and Madonna were best friends for years, but they reportedly had a falling out when Madonna divorced Guy Ritchie in 2008. Sources would start to claim that the ladies just have less and less in common, but then Gwyneth would hint that there was far more to the story. Gwyneth would reportedly tell Vogue, I can be mean, I can cave into gossip, I can ice people out, and I can definitely harbor revenge. In fact, I'm having a situation right now with a friend where I'm feeling pretty angry, but revenge is corrosive and doesn't make me feel good. Gwyneth would then reference her longtime personal trainer, Tracy Anderson, by saying, it's good that Anderson doesn't train Madonna anymore. It was too much. She keeps people waiting. It takes up your whole day. The source would then tell US Weekly that the beast started when Madonna mistreated Gwyneth when they said Madonna would defecate on her over and over again after Gwyneth dropped her. Madonna feels Gwyneth abandoned her and now Madonna will do pretty much anything to make her suffer. Number three, Dead Mouse. In fairness to Madonna, it seems like Dead Mouse has had beef with about every artist on the planet. However, that being said, when the DJ and producer took Madonna to task in 2012 for comments she made about substances in relation to Ultra Music Festival, when introducing DJ Avicii at the festival, Madonna would ask the crowd, How many people in this crowd have seen Molly? Dead Mouse was furious, tweeting, Very classy there, Madonna. Such a great message for the young music lovers at Ultra. Q the effing philanthropist. But hey, at least you're hip and trendy. Effing can't smack my head hard enough right now. I can appreciate her mediocre career and all good deed done. But what the F is that? That's your big contribution to EDM? That's your big message to ultra attendees? Hipsters speak for looking for substances. F off, effing idiot, F. Madonna would never respond to his comments, but she did try to awkwardly hug him at the 2015 title launch. Number two, Sandra Bernhard. In the early 90s, comedian Bernhard was one of Madonna's best pals. They even appeared on The Late Show with David Letterman together. Then, all of a sudden, something definitely changed. While neither Sandra nor Madonna have stated what actually happened between them, Sandra has been pretty vocal about her distaste for Madonna as a person. While Sandra does respect Madonna as an artist, she just finds Madonna in general just a little trashy. Sandra once told Dot429 that we were friends. We don't speak anymore. I have kept my friends my whole life, but Madonna feels differently when addressing Madonna's younger boyfriend. Sandra would also say, I'm not sure how involved she is with these young boys. She has four kids at home. At number one today, we have Arsenio Hall. When Madonna appeared on the Arsenio Hall show in 1990 to promote Dick Tracy, she made the comedian feel exceedingly uncomfortable by bringing up his ex girlfriend, Paula Abdul, and Abdul's rumored new flame. John Stamos. She would even proceed to get on Hall's nerves by saying, Are you jealous of John Stamos? I want to know how it feels to be dumped for John Stamos. She then offered Hall a gold ring before saying, Because I feel bad for you. Paul acted off before adding, For those of you who don't know, there was rumors that Paula Abdul and I were dating, and then I guess Paula showed up at the Grammys with John Stamos, and it was a full house. I couldn't go. Madonna then proceeded to go on by saying, Paula wanted someone who was home more often, Hall then kept his cool but lamented, wow, you're telling all my business? Madonna would go on to defend her move by saying, I know you were heading in the direction of getting into my intimate life, so I thought I'd turn it around. They would eventually change the subject, but the tension between the two would remain for the rest of the episode, and Madonna would proceed to call Hall hairstyle, tired and suggested he and best friend Eddie Murphy were more than friends. On the bright side of Hall, Entertainment Weekly reported it was the show's highest rated episode ever. Number 10, Christopher Titus. The American comedian did not hold back when it came to criticizing Will Smith for the initial incident at the 2022 Oscars when he walked on stage and slapped Chris Rock for joking about his wife Jada. Titus took to the podcast Christopher Titus TV and openly spoke about his disdain for the actor. Quote, watching the arrogance of Will Smith that night, I think that Will Smith probably believes he can do anything. In fact, many comedians took particular issue with Chris Rock being attacked, arguing that they should not be afraid 
afraid for their own safety on stage, just because they like to tell risky jokes. But Titus did not find Will's latest YouTube apology to be sincere either, and was among the many Twitter voices that condemned the video as fake and self-centered. Quote, Will Smith has lost me again. Dude, Chris said he'll contact you when he's ready. Why are you pushing him? You attacked a man on a global broadcast. You don't get to pick the redemption schedule. And by doing it publicly, you made it about you again. So it seems like Titus doesn't think Will deserves a get out of jail free card just yet. Number nine, Morgan Tremaine. Known for his explosive testimony during the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard defamation trial, former TMZ journalist Morgan Tremaine garnered international praise for his infamous quick-witted comeback to Heard's lawyer Elaine Bredhoft. But Tremaine once again was able to articulate what many people were thinking about the latest apology video from Will Smith. According to the producer, the video appeared more like a PR stunt than a genuine apology. Quote, this Will Smith apology video has PR team written all over it. They're testing the waters to see how the general public feels about him. Nothing to do with Chris. There might be some truth to how Tremaine feels though, because apart from the obvious product placement, the apology also serves another purpose, as Will is now starting to make big moves in an effort to have a career comeback, which has suffered quite a bit due to him being cancelled. It's been revealed that Smith is planning to star in a sequel to one of his most iconic movies, I Am Legend. So it makes sense that what we are now seeing is the actor slowly trying to rebuild his reputation in Hollywood. Number 8. Chris Rock's Brothers Chris's brother Kenny Rock told the LA Times that he would like to see the Academy take back the Oscar that Will won that night. However, what gets to him most about the entire incident is that he has continued to watch it play out on TV over and over again, and there's nothing that he can do. Quote, it eats at me watching it over and over again because you've seen a loved one being attacked and there's nothing you can do about it. My brother was no threat to him and you just had no respect for him in that moment. You just belittled him in front of millions of people that watch the show. Tony Rock, who was actually close with Will at one point, called out the actor during a comedy show. Quote, if you think you're gonna walk up on this stage, this ain't the mother effing Oscars. He threatened to fight back if Will ever tried the same thing with him. In fact, the Oscar winner addressed Tony during his apology video. Video. Quote, I want to apologize to Chris's family, especially Tony Rock. You know, we had a great relationship. You know, Tony Rock was my man, and this is probably irreparable. That seems to be the case as one Twitter user asked if the actor approved of Will's apology, and he simply responded by saying no. Number seven, The View. Smith received a hell of a lot of criticism for the slap itself, but a lot of people really seem to take issue with the video apology that he released a whole four months after the incident. The ladies on The View spoke about how disappointing it was to see Will Smith upload a five minute video addressing what is actually a really serious issue, considering it happened to Dave Chappelle too that same month. The host voiced their opinion about the Oscar slap and spoke about Will's apology video not long after it was released. While they unanimously agreed that it was a good first step, they said it simply wasn't enough to make good with Chris Rock. Alyssa Farrow Griffin said, I think he's got to go further, and even the fact that he didn't do this in more of an interview format where he might be challenged with some tough questions. I was a little surprised by. She then went on to say that it's a lot easier to say something scripted to camera than to ask, what was your motivation? Why didn't you then apologize in your acceptance speech? Alyssa Fields Smith should have sat down with Oprah because then she would have challenged him. Joy Behar also agreed with her and thought he should have come on The View instead. But it's clear that they felt the video format of the apology made it much too easy for him to evade criticism. Number six, Megyn Kelly. The veteran journalist believed that Smith made it all about himself at the Oscars when he he walked on stage and slapped his longtime friend. Megyn Kelly was super critical of his actions that night and felt that the actor simply saw an opportunity to make himself appear as a tough guy standing up for his partner. She said that most guys would have handled it after the set and spoken to the comedian backstage. Then Kelly insisted that Smith used his two minutes on the world stage to defend his actions when he should have been apologizing immediately for how he acted. Quote, it was a defense of him losing his temper. He should have got up there and he should have said, I'm very sorry for my bad behavior. I apologize to Chris, to the other nominees, and to the people whose attention I've wrongly dragged away from them on what would be their greatest night of their lives. Well, does she feel any differently now? Not really. In fact, she recently called out his newest YouTube video on The Megyn Kelly Show and reiterated her comments, this time suggesting that Smith is only sorry now because he has a new movie coming out, so he really needs that public forgiveness to ensure its success. Number five, Bill Maher. The comedian and television host made it pretty clear that he despises Will Smith on several occasions, most notably on one episode of his talk show, Real Time with Bill Maher, which aired on April 1st. Bill reacted to the explosive outrage against the actor at the time. 
quote to Will Smith, stay strong and I got your back, before following it up with, April Fools, you're a D. Ma went on to say that he couldn't feel sorry for Pinkett Smith because according to him, comparing a woman to Demi Moore looking her hottest is not exactly the worst insult he's ever heard. Then he made a pretty controversial comparison, quote, I mean alopecia is not leukemia. And no, he has not changed his opinion since. In fact, in another episode, Bill did a revived edition of explaining jokes to idiots where he made fun of cancel culture, the increased attacks against comedians, and called Will Smith humor impaired. He then said that it comes down to doing crowd work while hosting the Oscars. Celebrities should try to be a good sport and allow themselves to be made fun of for one minute. The politically incorrect alum even noted that Chris Rock's joke was initially received as funny by the audience, including Will Smith, who was initially spotted laughing before he decided to do anything else. Number four, Wanda Sykes. She co-hosted this year's Oscars along with Amy Schumer and Regina Hall. So comedian Wanda Sykes really saw everything unfold firsthand on Hollywood's Night of Nights, and she had a lot to say about it. Right after the Oscars, she addressed Will Smith's actions. Quote, for them to let him stay in that room and enjoy the rest of the show and accept his award, I was like, how gross is this? This is just the wrong message. Before joking that she wanted to be able to run out after he won and say, unfortunately, Will couldn't be here tonight. And while performing a stand-up comedy show in Orlando, she brought it up again, saying, I'm still traumatized. I couldn't believe he was still sitting there. Shouldn't you be sitting there with a lawyer or LAPD? She added that he hopes he gets his life together, but until then, F him. Wanda clearly hasn't changed her opinion of Smith. In fact, while appearing as a guest on a recent episode of Live with Kelly and Ryan, they asked her if she'd be open to hosting the Oscars again. And she just said, oh, hell no. To be fair, she did happen to co-host the most dramatic Academy Awards ceremony in recent history, as she recalled the incident again. Quote, so everybody's just gonna sit here? I was like, the show just kept going on. And I looked behind the curtain and he's still sitting here. What is happening? What is going on? It was crazy. It was just bizarre. Number three, Sharon Osbourne. In an April interview with the Sunday Times, the former talk co-host expressed her opinion on the Oscar incident. Osbourne made the comparison when explaining the hypocrisy she sees where some people are too scared to make judgments to a person's face about their behavior, but will do so behind a computer screen or behind their back, and use the recent Oscars incident between Will Smith and Chris Rock as an example. Quote, when he wins Best Actor Award, everybody stands up. It's like, you're such hypocrites. You're going to go home and say how disgraceful his behavior was, but you stand up and give him a standing ovation. But most controversially, she then went on to compare Will Smith to Hitler, insinuating that no matter how horrible someone is, the industry will still try and find a way to make money off of them. Although her experience isn't exactly like Will Smith's, Sharon Osbourne dealt with plenty of criticism of her own, following her comments on the talk over the Pierce Morgan and Meghan Markle feud. After a a heated discussion with her and the talk show co-host last year, she was fired from the show by CBS, so she's no stranger to backlash herself, but clearly she didn't mind comparing Will Smith to possibly the worst person who ever existed. Number two, Rosie O'Donnell. The comedian actually compared Will Smith to former President Trump, blasting the Oscar winner as a narcissistic madman who isn't being held accountable for slapping Chris Rock during the Oscars. O'Donnell took to Twitter to condemn Smith for the stunning confrontation at the 94th Annual Academy Awards. She wrote to her more than 1 million Twitter followers, quote, we watched him do it. Then, like the Trump years, we don't hold anyone accountable. Shame on us, shame on Will. O'Donnell made it very clear that she believes that the Oscars had failed everyone by not publicly denouncing Will right after the incident occurred and still allowing him to accept his award. But comedians do tend to stand together on this issue and she went on to praise Chris Rock for his composure after he was attacked on stage. Quote, so upsetting on every level. Bravo to Chris Rock for not eviscerating Will Smith, which he could do any day of the week. He walked away from a sad display of toxic masculinity. Those words sound pretty harsh, but it's very clear that she absolutely hates Smith for his erratic behavior that night and the message it sends to other comedians. And coming in at number one, Chris Rock himself. The comedian has not publicly commented directly on the slap, including in the wake of Smith's recent video apology, which was directly addressed to him. Instead, Chris Rock chose to use comedy to speak about 
about the incident. During his apology video, the actor insisted that he's reached out to Chris, and the message that came back is that he's not ready to talk, which couldn't be more apparent. He first brought it up during a stand up set at London's Royal Albert Hall. Quote, I'm okay. If anybody is wondering, got most of my hearing back. He followed that up with, don't expect me to talk about the BS. Your tickets were expensive, but not that expensive. Rock also referenced the incident when Dave Chappelle was attacked on stage near the end of his performance during the Netflix is a joke festival. When talking about the assailant, the comedian said, I thought that was Will Smith. After the recent apology was posted, Rock continued to make jokes while on stage in Atlanta. Quote, if everybody claims to be a victim, then nobody will hear the real victims. Even me getting smacked by Suge Smith, I went to work the next day. I got kids. He also added that anyone who says words hurt has never been punched in the face. Gotta love his take on that. Number 10, Megan The Stallion. Another female rapper, let's take a look at Megan The Stallion. Fans started to sniff out drama when Megan unfollowed both Nicki Minaj and Doja Cat on Instagram. Instagram. While the three had worked together in the past and made fairly successful music, fans started to suggest there was a rift forming between them. Taking to social media to say things like, Megan just unfollowed Nikki and Doja. Nah, my ship is sinking. An Instagram post from The Vault Uncut shared more drama when they posted a photo with a caption about more beef between the two. Doja Cat having apparently told her team to say no to ever working with Megan The Stallion again after she had reached out to them. This apparently came from the fact that Doja was now loyal to Nicki Minaj, and Nicki wasn't a very big fan of Megan. Megan, however, seems to be doing fine without them, as she recently released her music video for Plan B just a few days ago. While she still doesn't follow Doja Cat or Nicki Minaj, it's likely we probably won't see them working together for the foreseeable future. Number 9. Remy Ma American rapper Reminis Mackey, professionally known as Remy Ma, fell under the fire of Doja Cat's fans after she made a statement that they felt was attacking the rapper. On the Drink Champs podcast, Remy said the following, I don't think she's a rapper. Let's be clear with that. I don't put her in the rapper category. I don't think she's a rapper, but she makes dope records. I think she's dope. Despite her ending the statement with praise, Doja's fans focused on the beginning of it, taking offense to what she had said. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Doja spoke about people who say she's not a rapper, saying, Anyone who says that I'm not a rapper is in denial. They don't know what they're talking about. Fans took to Twitter to voice their disapproval of Remy, saying things like, Remy Ma can take several seats saying Doja Cat isn't a rapper. That doesn't even make sense. Remy said she felt that the fans came for her life. She appears to be focusing on rap moving forward, just recently posting on Instagram a tease for her next rap battle, calling it in the caption, Real rap. Number eight, Lord Pharaoh. Lord Pharaoh's name became known when he started dating American R&B singer Summer Walker. He's a rapper, singer, influencer, and entrepreneur, and also apparently not a huge fan of Doja Cat. A day after the Billboard Music Awards 2022, which took place in Las Vegas, he took to Instagram to call out how he felt about the rapper. To his 80,000 followers, he wrote the following: At Billboard, explain to me how a pop artist at Doja Cat wins two R&B categories and she has one R&B song ever. Continuing on, he said, at Billboard, numbers don't lie. How didn't she win? As I recall, still over it topped at Beyonce Lemonade twice. How did at Summer Walker not win any R&B woman categories? I'll wait. Clearly fiercely defending his girlfriend and critiquing Doja's music. Doja was the top nominated artist for awards with 14 total nominations. While Summer Walker was disappointed with her loss, she didn't say anything harsh towards Doja, instead teasing that maybe her boyfriend should break up with her so she can write some new music. Number 7. Nas Nas is an American songwriter, rapper, and entrepreneur who called out Doja Cat in his song Ultra Black, a collaboration with Hit Boy after she had been involved in controversy. Doja Cat came under massive fire after it was revealed that she had apparently been hanging out in white supremacy chat rooms and dissing her own South African African heritage. While she tried to apologize, the controversy went on for a while, and Nas commented on it in his lyrics where he said, We go in ultra black, unapologetically black, the opposite of Doja Cat, clearly commenting on her apparent racism allegations. Doja Cat herself didn't offer much comment on the situation, taking to TikTok to sarcastically comment, I'm so offended and upset by this song, while it played in the background. Nas attempted to deny any negative connotations to the lyrics, saying that he was just trying to find something to rhyme. Number 6. Lana Del Rey Famous singer-songwriter Lana Del Rey fell under fire when she made comments about her own place in the industry while attempting to drag others down. She made an incredibly long post on Instagram
Instagram, but I'll just share with you the relevant highlights. She said, now that Doja Cat, Ariana, Camilla, Cardi B, Kehlani, and Nicki Minaj and Beyonce have had number one songs about being sexy, wearing no clothes, f***ing, cheating, etc., can I please go back to singing about being embodied, feeling beautiful by being in love even if the relationship is not perfect? She said she was tired of receiving hate for the content of her songs when she was just singing about reality. She then capped off the post by promoting two new books and poetry. Many people immediately took to Twitter to note how she only seemed to call out black women in her post. Lana immediately took to the Instagram comments to try and defend herself, saying things like, I don't care anymore, but don't ever, 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 bro, call me racist because that is bull****. Doja Cat responded with a comment saying, Gang sunk that dunker, but it was quickly deleted. People interpreted it to mean that she was saying Lana Del Rey had really screwed up with that post. Number five, SZA. SZA is a famous American R&B singer who last year won an award with Doja Cat at the VMAs for best collaboration for their song, Kiss Me More. So if they're winning awards together, why would she hate her? Well, this is actually about something that SZA's father had to say about Doja Cat. Instead of sharing his excitement for his daughter winning the award in 2021, he took to Instagram to share how furious he was at Doja for being unprofessional. Apparently upset about the fact that Doja hadn't really given his daughter a chance to speak at the podium. While many fans had noticed that she hadn't gotten a chance to speak, most just took to Twitter to share lighthearted jokes and didn't directly attack Doja. Since the post on his Instagram seemingly went viral, SZA's father privated his Instagram account trying to avoid the backlash. Hey, if you can't take the heat, maybe you should stay out of the kitchen. Number 4. Pliny Australian guitarist Pliny was shocked when he discovered that Doja Cat had sampled his song without credit for her performance at the MTV European Music Awards. He put out a statement on social media saying, The lack of prior communication about it or proper credit upon release is disappointing, but not particularly surprising in a sector of the industry that is usually more interested in clout than creativity. He also added, It's being sorted now but would have been cooler a million views ago. Doja Cat was apparently incredibly apologetic over the situation, sending him a string of voice messages in his Instagram DMs saying she was sorry for the mistake and that she had loved his song. Pliny went on to say that receiving the messages was probably the number one strangest thing that has happened to him in his career. Definitely not everyone is expecting to wake up in the morning to an oral essay from Doja Cat in their DMs. He's continued on in his career and is doing pretty well for himself, currently performing on tour in Australia. Number 3. Jack Harlow American rapper and frequent white boy of the month, Jack Harlow had an interesting interaction with Doja Cat. While maybe not actual beef, I'm sure he was left a little disappointed at Doja towards the whole scenario. On an Instagram live, the two shared some friendly banter before Harlow said, I need to talk to you for a second. Jack went on to explain that fans thought they were dating because Doja's boyfriend looked like him. Doja immediately dipped from the conversation, saying that her wig was peeling off and she needed to deal with it. After she leaves, Harlow admits that he has a crush on her. Later, he said that it it was just the beginning of their friendship and now that he wouldn't do anything too silly and was playing it cool. Poor guy shot his shot, but unfortunately got turned down. We can only speculate on whether or not he still carries a flame for her. Number 2. Nicki Minaj While Nicki Minaj and Doja Cat seem to be getting along just fine now, with Doja taking Nicki's side against Megan Thee Stallion, they had some beef when Nicki had her 39th birthday last year. It started when one of Nicki's barbs, as she calls her fans, tweeted this in response to Doja's lack of a birthday post, saying, Doja Cat, since you didn't tell at Nicki Minaj happy birthday, please stop using her style, image, flow, animation, and visuals. You just another Megan that used her. Nicki seemed to agree with the fans soon after tweeting out, Copiers can't even say happy birthday. Lol this song go. Apparently also thinking that Doja was just a copier. The tweet was later deleted, but Nicki was maybe still a little angry, denying to appear on a song with Doja, which fans took as a sign of a feud. But Nicki stated that it was simply because she thought she couldn't bring anything to the song. Number 1. Cardi B New York rapper Cardi B has had beef with plenty of people, including Nicki Minaj, Azalea Banks, and Doja Cat. In an Instagram Live in 2020, Doja Cat could be seen rapping along to Cardi's song, Press. 
The way she was singing apparently sounded like she was mocking Cardi. She was obviously not overly impressed by the impersonation, putting out a tweet that said, do anything for the clout, moo, moo blatantly being in reference to Doja's famous song. The tweet was quickly deleted. Doja said that when she made the video, she had simply been buzzing on caffeine and hadn't meant it as any sort of insult towards Cardi. Doja said she spoke to Cardi and that she seems like a smart woman who probably insults her friends and other celebs as well, saying, that's just something you do when you're either hopped up on caffeine or lit. Afterwards, Cardi B apparently unfollowed Doja on social media and people were quick to report on a supposed feud, though neither party ever commented on it.